Apple's biggest WWDC in years is officially only two weeks away and we're expecting so much to come at this WWDC compared to any WWDC in the last five years since WWDC 2017. So here's what we can expect. I'm going to go through the announcements and the way I think Apple will do at the event. Starting with iOS 17, this year is supposed to be a minor update, but now it's shaping up to be a pretty decent update. Control Center is rumored to see its first redesign in 6 years, finally. Dynamic Island, which is expected to come to all iPhone 15 models this year, will also see some big upgrades, including Siri finally being in the Dynamic Island. We could also see interactive widgets finally, improved spotlight search, health app updates, and some updates to lock screen. The lock screen will get some small customization updates, along with a redesigned maps interface that will take up the whole screen. And Apple Music will also have lyrics on the lock screen. App Library will be getting customizable folders, and the Wild app will be getting redesigned. Performance and stability will be greatly improved in iOS 17, alongside all of these changes. And we should also be getting that redesigned CarPlay that Apple previewed last year with iOS 17. For supported devices, it looks like all devices supported by iOS 16 will get iOS 17, including the iPhone 8 and later. Next up, iPadOS 17. We don't know that much about iPadOS 17, but we do know a little bit. It's rumored to finally get that same lock screen customization that iOS 16 got, along with the health app finally coming to iPad. We don't know that much else though. For supported devices, it looks like the iPad 5th gen and 1st gen iPad Pros will be killed off with iPadOS 17, making the following devices supported. iPad 6th gen and later, iPad Pro 2nd gen and later, iPad Mini 5th gen and later, and iPad Air 3rd gen and later. Next, watchOS 10. Unlike years prior, this is going to be a pretty big update for the watch. WatchOS 10 will see a redesign to home screen for the first time ever on the Apple Watch, and widgets will finally be coming to the watch as well. We could also see third-party watch faces get added to the watch finally. As for support, I personally think all watches on WatchOS 9 will also get WatchOS 10, which is the Apple Watch Series 4 and later, and all models of Apple Watch SE and obviously Apple Watch Ultra. Next, Mac hardware. Yeah, we're going to Mac hardware before Mac software, but that's what it did last year as well. We've heard rumors of a 15-inch MacBook Air, and looks like we'll finally see it at WWDC. The 15-inch MacBook Air is basically the 13-inch, but bigger. It'll feature a 15.5-inch LCD display with a similar resolution to the 14-inch MacBook Pro. Expect also better battery life, better speakers, and the same M2 chip as the 13-inch. I'd expect this thing to be priced around $100 to $200 more than the 13-inch at around $12.99 or $13.99. We could also potentially see the Mac Pro as well. The Mac Pro would feature the M2 Ultra chip and potentially this thing called a compute module which is found in iOS code a few months ago. That's speculated to be an M2 Ultra in a module they can swap out later down the road or potentially even add multiple M2 Ultras together. We don't know exactly if this is what you're doing or even if we'll see the Mac Pro at all at WADC because it looks like Mark Gurman is doubting that we'll see it at WWDC. But we'll have to find out here in a few weeks. Next up, Mac OS 14. Based on trademarks, I'm personally guessing the name will be Mac OS Sonoma. Mac OS Sonoma is rumored to be more of a minor update, potentially a refinement update like Snow Leopard in 2009. For supported Macs, Apple's killing off Intel Macs as quickly as they can, and this year I think the support device list will look like this for Mac OS 14. For MacBook Air, I think it will stay the same at 2018 later, MacBook Pro 2018 then later, with the 2017 model being killed off, iMac 2019 later with the 2017 model getting killed off, Mac Mini 2018 and later, no changes there, Mac Studio 2022 and later, no changes there, and Mac Pro 2019 and later, again, no changes there. All 2017 Macs, including the last 12-inch MacBook and iMac Pro, will be dropped. Okay, we've gone through a lot this WADC, and this would be a pretty packed WADC as is. But we're not done yet. In the great words of Steve Jobs, Tim says, one more thing.
Apple Reality Pro. This thing will be the headliner of the event and potentially the headliner for Apple this whole year. This is going to be the next iPhone or iPad moment. Reality Pro will be Apple's first ever mixed reality headset. It will have two 4K displays, a pancake lens, an M2 chip, an H2 audio chip like the AirPods Pro, swappable headbands potentially, an external battery pack, and a $3,000 price tag. This is really going to be the first big product category for Apple since 2014 with the Apple Watch. Nearly 9 years. The headset will run a new OS called XROS. It'll have a similar look and feel to iOS and iPadOS, along with customizable widgets. We could also potentially see some content creation apps like iMovie come to this headset, along with, potentially I'm speculating, Final Cut Pro and Logic Pro, as we just got them with the iPad. The Reality Pro will be announced at WWDC here in just a few weeks, and it will be releasing later this fall or by the end of this year. So if all this happens at WWDC in just two weeks, it will be a very, very exciting event. I personally haven't been this excited for a WWDC since 2017, and I'm very, very ready for it.